to English Christian Church Cross Street, where we're connecting kids with Christ. Merry Christmas, everyone. That's right. It's December, which means it's all Christmas, all the time, here at English Christian Church Cross Street. Christmas means celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. And I say that calls for a light show. Let the Christmas celebration begin. What's your favorite Christmas tune? It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas. Deck the halls with boughs of holly. Fa la 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 la. Oh, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. And I, I, I am dreaming of a white Christmas. <sighs> Oh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose. I love a good Christmas song to celebrate, and these are a lot of fun. But I also love the carols that tell why we celebrate. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go and tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Or, hark the herald angels sing, glory to the newborn King. Peace on earth and mercy mild, God and sinners reconciled. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him. Oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. Christmas is when God sent his very own son, Jesus, to live with us. It's a key part of the rescue plan. It's the time God chose to make peace with us. When we celebrate what Christmas is truly about, others can see God at work, not just in us, but in the world around us. That's why choosing to celebrate the true meaning of Christmas is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud, it's all about living loud. Christmas morning. 
time, Haley. I gotta say, I am just about to burst with excitement. <laughs> it's that time of year. You know, presents are being wrapped, people are singing songs on the street corner, everyone around me is so jolly. It's the one time of year I can even get away with using the word jolly. I don't have to tell you what time of year it is. Christmas is celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. You see, it's all about celebrating. And one of the ways I like to celebrate is by decorating. There's only one thing missing. Hmm. Yee! Yay! They say the Christmas lights are bright at Christmas, at Christmas. Oh my, um, hmm. <laughs> Whoa, well, this is a mess. <laughs> How did this happen? The lights were untangled when I put them in the box last year. Are they moving around in there? Oh, I'll never be able to untangle all of this. This is impossible. Uh, well, suddenly, I don't feel like celebrating anymore. Isn't it strange how sometimes you feel like celebrating and then something happens that makes celebrating impossible? Well, in today's story, you'll see how there's always some reason to celebrate, even when things seem impossible. Hey, maybe I could use these lights the way they are. Yeah, yeah. E earrings, earrings, maybe? The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, Inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 1. Zechariah and Elizabeth lived in the hill country of Judah. Both Zechariah and Elizabeth came from the family line of priests. But while many priests made a big show of their work just to impress other people, Zechariah and Elizabeth actually loved and served God. Dear God, help us to follow your commands in all we say and do. And please, Please give us a child. Through many long years, Zechariah and Elizabeth had been unable to have children. Bless their hearts. They must have done something wrong for God to let this happen. But God wasn't punishing Zechariah and Elizabeth. In fact, one year Zechariah got an amazing opportunity. His group of priests gathered about twice a year in Jerusalem to serve God in the temple. Zechariah, you've been chosen. Me? <gasps> to go inside the holy place? Each year, one priest was selected to enter the temple and burn incense before God. Now, with 1,000 priests in this group, this could have been a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. Wow. Okay. I'm ready. As the other priests waited outside, praying to the Lord, Zechariah entered the beautiful holy place of the temple. Carefully, from a golden censer, he spread incense over glowing coals on the altar. The fragrance filled the air like the prayers of the priests outside. There, all done. But as Zechariah turned to go, bright light blazed up on the right side of the altar. <gasps> oh, a dazzling angel towered over the altar. Zechariah stumbled back. Do not be afraid, Zechariah. Your prayer has been heard. Oh, uh, uh, thank you. Which prayer? Your wife, Elizabeth, will have a child. A child? Zechariah struggled to think clearly. It will be a boy, and you must call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you. His birth will make many people very glad. He will be important in the sight of the Lord and filled with the Holy Spirit. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will prepare the way for the Lord. That's, uh, but, but Elizabeth, uh, 
How can I be sure of this? Oh, we're both old enough to be great-grandparents. The light burned even brighter, and Zechariah shielded his eyes. I am Gabriel. I serve God. I have been sent to speak to you and to tell you this good news. And now, you will have to be silent. You will not be able to speak until after John is born. That's because you did not believe my words. They will come true at the time God has chosen. Zechariah tried to respond, but no sound came from his lips. These words will come true at the time God has chosen. The light flared and then dimmed. Zechariah found himself alone again. Stunned, he staggered out of the temple. There you are. What took so long? Zechariah opened his mouth, but still no words came out. Uh, didn't catch that. Zechariah gestured wildly, attempting to explain. <gasps> oh, charades. I love charades. Um, mouth, duck lips, open, shut. Oh, 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 you can't talk. Why not? Something tall, wings, um, ostrich, flamingo. Aha, angel. You saw an angel. Although he couldn't speak, Zechariah finished his time of service and returned home. And in a short time, Elizabeth found out that she would indeed have a child. The Lord has done this. He has been kind to me. At last, the time came for Elizabeth to have her baby. Well, bless your heart if he don't have quite the pair of lungs. He's beautiful. Just look at that head of hair. Eight days after the baby was born, friends and relatives gathered for his naming. His name will be Zachariah, of course. Yeah, after his daddy. No, he must be called John. John? Honey, nobody in your family has that name. It ain't right. Everyone turned to Zechariah. Zachariah, that boy needs a proper name. Still unable to speak, Zechariah gestured. Oh, 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 charades again. Hold on, a uh, stick, a uh, carrot, a, uh, ooh, he needs something to write with. As soon as Zechariah had a tablet and quill in hand, he wrote quickly. What does that say? I can't see. His name is John. Well, bless my heart if Zechariah ain't talking again. <laughs> Praise God, his name is John. John. You like that, don't you, little one? Everyone was filled with fear and wonder as the news spread through the hill country. It was clear the Lord was with John. What is that child gonna be? So what seemed impossible had become possible. God had given Zechariah and Elizabeth a child in their old age. God had taken away Zechariah's speech and then returned it. And then, when John grew older, he would play a very important role in introducing his cousin to the world, Jesus. As I was thinking about today's story, an idea occurred to me. One thing I can celebrate today. So Zechariah and Elizabeth were too old to have children. It was impossible. But God made it happen. They had John who would grow up to introduce his cousin, Jesus, to the world. Nothing is impossible for God. He can do anything. Here's why that's worth celebrating. There are things in our lives that seem impossible. Could be a tough subject at school. Could be a problem you're having at home or a disagreement you're having with a friend. Your problem could be so bad, you think you'll never be able to untangle it. But if God is able to give life, then he's able to give you knowledge and wisdom to get through that tough subject in school. If God is powerful enough to control the weather, then he's powerful enough to help you weather any storms that come your way. And if God can bring peace to the whole world through the sacrifice of his son, then he can bring peace to your life and in your relationships. God can do anything. So, Here's the one thing to remember today. Celebrate because God can do anything. I'm not sure if God will physically come down here and do something about my uh, problem, but if he can create the universe from nothing, 
then I believe that he can give me the patience, determination, and creativity I need to untangle these lights. Hmm. And that makes me want to celebrate. Yay! Merry Christmas! <sighs> Here goes. See you next time. It seemed like Zachariah and Elizabeth were too old to have children. It seemed impossible, but God made it happen. Let's see if you remember. Who would their son, John, grow up to introduce to this world? That's right, Jesus. Nothing is impossible for God. God can do anything. That's reason to celebrate, isn't it? The one thing to remember for today is celebrate because God can do anything. Say that with me. Celebrate because God can do anything. Sometimes there may be some things in our lives that may seem impossible. It could be a tough subject at school or a problem you're having at home or a disagreement that you're having with a friend. When you're up against something tough, Remember that God can do anything. Remember that you can trust God no matter what. He's big enough and powerful enough to help you in any situation. Our scripture verse for the month is John 3.16. Let's read it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. So let's pray. Dear God, thank you for showing us the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth, how you can do anything. It's so cool to think that Zechariah and Elizabeth's son, John, went on to play an important story in Jesus. Help us remember that nothing is impossible for you. Help us to trust you and remember that you are with us in the good times and the tough times. You're right there through everything, through anything that we may face. We love you and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, you ready for the Christmas photo? I am. I, right. I just keep feeling like we're forgetting something. Kellen! Oh. We gotta have Kellen in the picture. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I got it. What? We'll uh, just leave some space in between us, oh. and then we can put them in later. That's brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that should do it, yeah? Okay, here we go. Yeah. One, two, three. <laughs> As you can see, we're ready to celebrate the big day and the entire Christmas season all month long. Yeah, some of us are more ready than others, Brandon. <laughs> that is true. John here has gone above and beyond preparing this year. Yeah, in my opinion, nothing says Merry Christmas and Jesus is born quite like 25,000 twinkling Christmas lights. Wait, wait, there are 25,000 Christmas lights oh, here? Oh, yeah, and I'm ready to light them all up and let the Christmas celebration begin. All right. Well, I guess uh, without further ado, yeah. uh, do you want me to do a drum roll or something? Oh, that'd be great. Okay, uh, That's half decent. Here we go. Three, two, one, boom!
are they supposed to? Yeah, hold on, hold on. Wait, oh, uh, the plug was up. Okay, right. ready? Three, <laughs> two, <laughs> one. <laughs> Come on, three, two, one. For you. Uh, uh. Okay. Uh, I don't think you're supposed to shake them like that. I don't understand. They were just working earlier. Well, I can picture it in my mind, and it's breathtaking. Oh, thanks, Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's probably a bad bulb. If one goes out, you know, the whole thing doesn't work. Yeah, I guess I'll just need to check each and every one of them. Oh, good idea. Hey, if you need any help, I'll be here doing the show. I appreciate that. Sure thing. Hey, why don't we do a little quiz? I can't do a quiz. I'm checking the bowls. No, I was talking to them. Oh, right. So get ready to challenge your friends, challenge your neighbors, or just challenge yourself. It's time to play How Bright Are Your Lights? Challenge these lights. How bright are your lights? Here's how it works. I'll ask you a holiday-themed trivia question, true, false, and it's up to you to shout out the answer from wherever you are. This machine here will measure all of your responses. Green light for true, red light for false. If most of you get the right answer, I will eat a bite of John's Aunt Margaret's 24-year-old fruitcake. Hey, I was saving that. For what? I don't know. Here we go. First question. <clears throat> Thomas Edison invented electric Christmas tree lights. Is that true or false? Shout out your answers. All right, we got some trues, we got some falses. Where is it gonna land? Uh -huh. All right, time's up. It looks like most of you picked true, and the answer is... Oh, can I say, can I say? Uh, sure, go right ahead. The answer is true. He did it in New York City. Correct. <laughs> In 1882, Edison decorated a Christmas tree in New York City with 80 blinking red, white, and blue electric lights. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Now you have to eat the fruitcake. You got to eat the fruitcake. I thought you were testing lights. Right. I... Oh, man. I lost my place. Here we go. Hmm. Ah. Next question. <clears throat> Christmas lights can be powered by electric eels. Is that true or false? Shout it out now. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm hearing, I'm seeing some things. All right, and time is up, and it looks like most of you said false, and the correct answer is true. You missed that one. The Enoshima Aquarium in Japan powers their Christmas lights with electric eels. They can produce up to 800 watts of electricity. Whoa, I escaped the cake. That's great. Question three, 20 million pounds of Christmas lights are recycled every year. True or false? You got a guess, John? Uh, don't talk to me. I don't want to lose my place. Okie dokie. Let's hear your answers. Go. They think, oh, okay, and the majority of you think that it is true, and the answer is true. <laughs> Over 20 million pounds of lights are shipped to Xijiao, China every year to be recycled into new Christmas lights or other products such as furniture, ornaments, or slippers. <laughs> I don't think I'd want to wear slippers made out of Christmas lights. Yeah, it does seem like a strange thing to make. Yeah. Hey, I thought you didn't want us to talk to you. <laughs> All right, here it goes. Oh. No. I, I like how it stains mm -hmm. things. I do not want another bite of that, okay? Get this one wrong. Ugh. You're missing out. Last question. In San Diego, California, if lights are kept up past February 2nd, homeowners are subject to jail time. True or false? Well, whoever made these lights deserves jail time. I'm telling you that. <laughs> no! All right, shout out your final answers now. <laughs> okay, time is up. You say it's false, and the answer is... False! They don't throw you in jail for keeping your lights up in February, but there is a $250 fine. 
which I would gladly pay if I could avoid eating this fruitcake. But a deal's a deal. Okay. That is not good. Hmm. Huh. Thanks for playing, everybody. How's it going, John? <laughs> not well. I don't know where I am. It's Bible story time with Kellen. Hey guys, what's up? Oh, don't talk to John. He's checking Christmas lights. Uh, they're not working for some reason. Wow, he's got a lot of them. Oh, yeah, over 25,000. Well, why don't you take a break and help me tell today's Bible story? It's the story before the Christmas story. <laughs> Why not? Well then, to the theater! There was a priest named Zechariah. I'm a priest, and I've been doing that a long time. <laughs> and his wife, Elizabeth. I'm his wife. And I've been doing that an even longer time. <laughs> they loved and served God faithfully for many years, but had been unable to have children. Oh, dear God, thank you for the many blessings you've poured out on us. We are truly grateful. Truly grateful. But even though we are now old, we would still like to have a child. I have a rattle and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm, mm, mm. One day, Zechariah was chosen to go into the temple of the Lord in Jerusalem. His job was to burn incense as a way to honor God. Mmm, nothing like the smell of burning incense. <laughs> While he was there, an angel appeared. Zechariah! Ooh! Oh, Steve Burke! Uh, uh, I've got this burning ball of sweet smell, and I'm not afraid to use it. Do not be afraid, Zachariah. Hmm? Do not be afraid? <laughs> you disappeared out of nowhere. Who are you, anyway? I am Gabriel, and I am here to tell you God has heard your prayers. Oh? Huh? Which prayer are you talking about? The, the one about the donkey? He's doing much better now. <laughs> your wife, Elizabeth, will have a child. Say what? It will be a boy, and you must call him John. He will be a joy and delight to you. Mm. He will bring back many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will prepare the way for the Lord. <laughs> oh, come on! We can have a baby, we're too old! <laughs> Who put you after this? Was it Meshik? I mean, oh, no, maybe it was Ooze. Ooze? <laughs> oh, no. I have been sent by God oh. to speak to you and tell you this good news. But because you did not believe my words, you will be unable to speak until after John is born. Zechariah returned home to Elizabeth, still unable to speak. You're saying, I have big news. Oh, really, I do too. I'm gonna have a baby. Oh, oh. You're saying, I know. An angel told me. Really? After a few months, or nine, Elizabeth had her baby. You know... All the neighbors think we should call you Zachariah Jr. after your papa. My Aunt Gertrude wanted your name to be Ezekiel. I call you EZ for short. My dad thought it should be Bob. No, John! His name will be John! I know, that's what I told them. Oh, thank you, thank you. Wait, I can talk. I can talk! Yeah! I don't need your flags! Get out of my hands! Once again, God proved he can do anything. Zachariah and Elizabeth were blessed with a child in their old age. 
a baby who would grow up to be known as John the Baptist. And God had a very special job for John. John would help introduce his cousin, Jesus, to the world, and he would announce God's plan to rescue his people. The end. Or technically, the beginning. Now that's a way to start off a celebration. God knows how to set the scene for his story. I'll say. Thanks, Kellen. See ya. Catch you later. You know, John, it's amazing when you really think about the fact that there is nothing God can't do. I mean, he can do things that we think are impossible. And there's a reason to celebrate God every day, don't you think? Yes, I do. I'm just celebrating on the inside. Oh, good to hear. Reveal the question. What are some things you celebrate? Oh, well, there's uh, birthdays. Uh, half birthdays, A test days. What's an A test day? You know, when you get an A on a test. Oh. <laughs> Happened twice at my house. My, my sister is really smart. Or it doesn't have to be a day. You can celebrate when you do well at a soccer game or when you finally finish putting away the dishes. Or, or when God does something really amazing in your life. Yeah. Are you really going to check every single box? Well, what else can I do, well, Brandon? I don't know. Have you, did you check to make sure the extension cord was plugged into the wall? <laughs> do you think I'd really check all of these bulbs if I wasn't sure the extension cord wasn't plugged into the wall? <laughs> I'm going to go check the extension cord. <laughs> I forgot to plug in the extension cord. <laughs> So, let's try this again. All right, you want me to do the drum roll? No, 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 that's fine. Don't try so hard. Here we go. Three, two, one. Oh, wow. Oh. Yes. Wow, these really are amazing. Yeah? Oh, you haven't seen the half of it. There's more? Oh, oh, you know, I, I think maybe that's a little too much. Really? Yeah, yeah, maybe just a little. Wow. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll see you next week for a brand new show uh, all about celebrating Christmas. Yeah, I, I hope we'll see you then. My eyes are starting to hurt. Hey, guys. So, I'm here for the Christmas photo shoot. Guys? John? Brandon? Guess I could do the photos myself. <laughs> all right, here we go in three, two, one. So thanks for joining us for another week of Ingalls Christian Church Cross Street. Can't wait to see you next week live in person at the church. We're here on YouTube. See you next week.